Hi everybody, it's uh, Luke Gallant here from the Yamaha YT624EJ Snowblower Maintenance Channel. Uh, I can tell that last year I didn't produce any of these videos because the uh, technology challenges I've had getting back up to speed uh, this time here have left me on my 12th take. Um, it's the start of the 2022-2023 winter season. There's been some ice and snow that's fallen here in Timmins already. And uh, this snowblower is ready for its sixth season, blowing snow off our driveway here and making YouTube traffic. Um, this year, I've, I'm planning to do a couple of good solid videos. Um, I'll be starting off today with the uh, auger removal, maintenance and reinstallation video. I'll be going through the Yamaha manual. One of the things uh, I'm not sure if everybody that watches this channel realizes is that I'm an engineer and like many engineers, my sense of humor is a dry mix of uh, seriousness and sarcasm uh, and this channel is no different so a lot of what i say is sometimes serious but sometimes sarcastic in reality at my house do i take my torque wrench off for every fastener yes personal choice is it necessary no do whatever you'd like to do i'm just a dude in the garage maintaining a snowblower people don't maintain snowblowers usually everybody laughs that i maintain this snowblower it's a hobby i don't get paid by yamaha yamaha doesn't support me so i get to do whatever i like whether good or bad. All right, let's get to the manual and let's get to maintaining. Thanks for watching. So here we have section 7-1, the auger and worm case. I'll pan here slowly and you can pause as you need. We're gonna be removing the auger. We will remove the worm case, but I will not disassemble the worm case. You'll notice on these pages that there's a grease that's the C-type grease. So we'll have a look at what that C-type grease is. And to remove the auger, we will put the machine on a block like this. And we'll get it out. Here in the uh, illustrated symbols, we've got the E oil, which is engine oil. And we've got the C, the low temperature grease. All right. So we're going to start by disassembling both bearing housing assemblies. We've got the machine lifted. Now we remove the left bearing housing assembly. And then we are going to remove the worm case stay, which is this piece here. That's a 12 millimeter. So I'm going to infer that by bearing housing assembly, the center bolt is also in included. Back to the right side. So now I'm not sure what's going to happen, but we should be able to pull both augers off the shaft. Negative. Okay, so again, I might have over disassembled, but oh, there we go. Here we come up. Oh, and I should have taken the oil out of this, apparently. Okay, let's see. Oh, perfect. And the auger is out. So now we can continue the disassembly. So now that we've got the auger out, I'm gonna take the bearing housing off from both sides. Place that down. I'll take the other one off as well. And then we can take this auger off the shaft and put that to the side. We actually see the condition looks quite good. There seems to be a seal of some sort here. I see here the, you know, this worm case. So here I, I slid uh, this piece off here and the woodruff key uh, fell off. So I'll continue to slide that off. We've got some tape and then we've got um, some old grease. So what we'll do is we'll put that to the side here and we'll do the other side. We can see the key kind of fall out here probably. Oh no, here's my oil, big mess. The book did say to drain the oil, but one of these examples where I really preferred not to. And now I've got this oil. 
on my tile floor, which is awesome. Okay, so here, um, this should come off. It's a little bit stuck. And I'm gonna go have a look at the book because I think there was actually a comment about that. Here I got a big bit of junk in this key. Don't usually like getting my hands dirty on this channel. Now having wished I'd followed the direction from the Yamaha manual, I'm gonna drain the oil. I don't know if Hercules tightened this bolt or what, but anyway. Hmm. Maybe worth changing this more often than one would think, considering. You can definitely see some uh, very small filings in there. Now I've just checked the manual and apparently this, uh, this right side piece should be coming off as well. It's kind of tape. And we've got this, this other piece. So, well, I wouldn't say it was stuck on there. It was a little tiny bit tight, but. All right, guys, against my better judgment, I'm taking this worm case apart, even though I said I wouldn't earlier. But having gone this far, now I'm very intrigued to see what it looks like inside. What we're gonna do here is take all the, the side bolts off. Now that the oil is drained, I started with this one already and see what she looks like. Now it says to use a flat blade screwdriver and kind of pry apart the halves. So we'll give that a try. Now it's, it's obviously aluminum here, so I want to be very gentle. There we go. gears out and I'm trying to get the housing off and it's definitely being a little bit stubborn I don't know if the uh, shaft is is marred a little bit kind of take out the caliper and check it doesn't look too bad um, bit of roughness there And I really yank on this here, trying not to damage it. There we go. Perfect. Flat file and and uh, flatten the edges of the kiwi here. All right. So here I've uh, finished cleaning off the two cases and there's uh, definitely metal filings kind of everywhere. So here we are now. I've got this uh, quasi jank set up, and I'd like to get the bearing out so I can get so I can get the seal done that's behind it. Um, I'm going to use this uh, wheel bearing puller from my motorcycle. So behind the bearing here we have the seal, and I think the bearing's still fine. So I want to get the seal replaced while I have this open. So we're gonna insert this in here and I'm gonna try taking this torch and, and heating the perimeter quickly enough so that I can hopefully um, get it apart without having to yank on it too much because I'm pulling on the inner race. So I don't wanna to apply too much force to that. So let's get this inserted in here. I think what I probably should have done is taken a course in uh, filming 
because it's not that obvious what to do. Anyway, I've got the oven mitts from the kitchen, so we won't let the wife know. Let's stick this in here now. So here, this is a, a bit of a tight fit. Just kind of compress it in there. Then we push it down until we hear the sound that it's past the race. There, so now it's bottomed out. We can get a tool, two crescent wrenches, hail the crescents, and we'll just tighten that. So you definitely want that secure. Now you make sure that this is pulled up so that it's tight on the bottom lip there. And then tighten it up, nothing too crazy. And put that to the side. Then we get this hammer installed. And we're gonna try to be as gentle as possible with this hammer. So I've got the oven mitt here. I'm gonna heat up the outside there, the aluminum, just to try to get it hot to expand a bit. And I'll try to yank the bearing out without applying too much force. So what I'll do is I'll put this oven mitt on. Now you wanna do this fast enough as to not get the bearing too hot. Doing the back side would kind of be nice as well, but we'll just try this for now. Oh, now this bearing is $22 from SKF, so I don't really want to buy another one. Even though maybe I should upgrade all the bearings in here to uh, something of a bit of a higher quality. I'm gonna try yanking on this right soon. Kind of running out of propane, I think, here. Okay, let's give this a try. So we'll hold it firm here and just try to... Oh, there we go. Perfect. So now, now to get this seal out, we gotta be careful because the whole thing is a bit sharp. So this seal is a little bit cool now, or hot, I mean. <laughs> um, just gonna kind of grab it. Okay, we're gonna put this to the side and I'll start on the other one. Perfect. All right. So I'm playing around here with the bearings from the worm gear and they look decent, but something, I think some, some materials in there, which is why I was trying to blow them out here. And I'll try it again. All right, so now that these have been removed, I'm gonna take down the um, part numbers of these seals and bearings. I'll write everything down and I'll post it in the description and on this video. I'll continue filming once we start reassembling stuff. So now we have the uh, the auger shaft. This wheel, I'm going to re replace it. So I get to get to get the wheel off with a hammer. Probably waking the kids up. And we can see here that it's a little bit tight around this light light corrosion here. So here, I'll kind of go slow there. Let's see if I can. So I'm gonna opt to replace this just because, you know, I'm pretty uh, anal. And I think what we'll do is in six years, we can check it again. I think that the amount of wear that I've got there is indicative of the oil not, do not doing its job. So as an exercise here, we're gonna take the oil that we drained out, even though lots of filings were left in the uh, gearbox. We'll confirm that the uh, our wheel is steel, which we, we did know that already, but anyway, 
Let's uh, let's run through here and see what kind of filings we pick up. I got a feeling it's not going to be great. All right. And let's see what we got. Kind of wipe that on a paper towel. I can see it's pretty dense already. Yeah, it's kind of a... Of course, I'm going to have to... Yeah, nice paste. Lots of filing. Hopefully we'll avoid that in the next six year run. So in terms of other components, we've got the uh, the bearing housings on the end of the auger shaft. Um, these bearings here are sealed, some 6203 RS bearings. Um, RS being rubber shield. So I have no plans to replace these. These are very easy access. They still seem to be rolling well, so I'm not concerned. Um, I guess what I could do is pop the shield off and, and grease them inside. Um, so there's one of those on each end. And then in the book here, it actually says these are rubber. Um, these must be like rubber damp damping assemblies. So I could pop the circlip off and then pull this assembly apart and then the rubber pieces will come out. But to me, I'm not gonna go through that. I've already got enough on my hands. But you can see here, there's like a kind of a damping, which is a nice touch. So the book says to replace these with new, but I'm not gonna bother doing that. If these were cracked, you could see how eventually these would crack and stuff, but they're pretty high quality and they're not bad yet. So I'm not gonna bother. So I'll clean this stuff a little bit more, then it'll go back. And I'll write the bearing numbers down for you guys if you want the, uh, the end ones. Um, but I'll be leaving those in situ. Um, and I think it's probably not a bad exercise to get get the these cleaned out because these will have a little bit of corrosion they actually corrode the shaft so it's not a bad thing to clean it and apply some grease when reassembling so one thing we can say is that there's no better time to work on a snow blower especially one that was working before you took it apart than when the snow's falling like this makes a guy feel really awesome all right so a couple days after i initially took the gearbox apart um after i took it apart i had a good look and based on the oil that I'd seen that was coming out with a pile of filings in there, it raised some questions in my mind as to whether anything was wrong. So that's why I opened the gearbox. Now, as I showed before, this wheel has quite a lot of wear more than it should. I'll try to get a good zoom on this, but. Okay, so we've got a zoom on there and you can see how bad the wear is there. Now, I know this would go probably several, several more years. And as well, the gear is unidirectional. So you could flip the gear around and continue to use it now in my case because we had so much active discussion about types of oil that should be used uh, within this gearbox and uh, so as my video previously had said to use engine oil which is what this manual says we all discuss as it might not be the best uh, choice so now i'm going to replace the gear and put in some gear case oil uh, marine gear case loops so it's just sae 90 uh, adw 90. so the materials i've procured for this a new gear, $160 Canadian. This worm gear is much harder than the wheel, so it's perfectly fine. The four bearings that were in there are made by CNU. There's a single 6201 tiny bearing, and then there's four uh, 6004. Now they still feel decent, um, but I think there's material inside which I can feel. I don't like that. So I'm gonna take this all apart. I might as well put new bearings. So I've got those in the freezer. And then I've got, there's three seals. Now these bearings and these seals, I did not order through Yamaha. I love buying Yamaha parts, but I bet you I saved a hundred dollars or more. Instead, I bought the seals through uh, Wayjax here in Canada, but you can go to any bearing shop and get them. So I'll put the numbers of the seals and the bearings in the description so you can order them that way. So these seals from Yamaha are about 14, uh, dollars each whereas if you buy them from a sealed place maybe paying three to four dollars at most each the bearings um the small one was nine dollars and the other two were fairly expensive at 22 dollars. now i bought skf bearings skf is a reputable brand these are made in argentina whereas you can get what they call offshore bearings um, these are offshore bearings actually these are chinese bearings made by a company called cnu I think they'd probably work for many more years, but I just didn't like the sound. I think it's probably material from the uh, wheel that's in there. So when I get the other ones out, I'll give them a spin, but they're in the freezer now cooling off, so they go into the case easier. So I'll get going on putting the seals in and the bearings in, and I'll uh, film that, and then we'll get to putting the gearbox back into the unit and buttoning things up. 
All right, so we're gonna start by putting our seals in. Now this seal goes in with the writing facing down. Um, I'll put a little bit of grease or oil actually on the uh, outside of the seal. I've got a bearing driver with a 32 millimeter and a 17. And then I've got <clears throat> this small hammer with two heads. Now because this seal has to be driven with the text side down, it means you have to drive it on the back side. So you definitely don't wanna drive it from the inside. You wanna drive it from the outside. So with this, uh, bearing driver I can get that fit now the seal is a uh, 20 by 30 by 7 and the only driver I have is a 32 so <clears throat> when we get close when this starts getting driven down I'll then turn to this 22 socket to finish the job because the seal is probably recessed about a millimeter in there let me get that going so we're gonna get here a very very thin layer of Yamalu uh, grease super super thin just to kind of make sure it doesn't bind we don't want to put a whole bunch and so we're going to get the, the seal in text side down and then we get our bearing driver in there now i'm putting on this cloth because the back side of this is not you don't really want to put this on the surface because you don't want to hammer it in your way so i'll put on this on this uh, towel so then with the driver vertically and give it some soft taps So it's going in there nice. Now I've bottomed out with my seal driver. So I'll proceed to the socket, which is exactly the same size. So now I can finish the job here. There we go. So now I've got the seal beyond the the bottom where the bearing is going to go i'll just give it another little tap to make sure it's good all right so that seals in there now i'm going to do a final clean before i put that bearing in so you want to make sure nothing's in the bottom so that it can go in smoothly so that's the one case and i can do the other one same thing take the seal very very minor amount of grease just to say, and again, text side down. I'll get the bearing driver in. Put a bit of pressure and then. All right, now that's in there and we are bottomed out. Now what we want to do before we forget as well is put a little bit of grease on the inside of the seal because we don't want that being dry. So I'll use this Yamaha low temperature grease for suspensions, snowmobile suspensions. So you wanna grease the inside there to make sure that it's not dry. So the grease product I'm using here is this Yamalube uh, uh, high performance suspension grease. So it's obviously rated for cold weather. So now that I've got both my seals ready, uh, I'm gonna try bringing these cooled bearings in and driving the bearing in. I prefer not to heat this up because I don't want to burn the seal. So I'm going to try it as is. And if it's not going in well enough, I'll have to maybe change my technique a little bit, but I hope it'll be good as is. Okay. So we're going to continue with this. I've got this, uh, these SKF Explorer bearings, the 6004 series for these two outer ones. I've had them in the freezer for about two hours. The obvious reason for that is to, uh, get them to shrink a little bit so that you can get them in more easily. So these bearings always go with the writing facing out. So I've got my driver set up with a 40 and a 20 millimeter. So now what I can do is with the text side out, stick the 20 millimeter in there. Then I've got pushing on the outer race. So you don't want to wait too long. It might go in easy because it's cold. A couple soft taps. I guess not that soft, huh? So let's just make sure that we're bottomed out there. We we don't uh, we don't want to be loose in there. All right. So that bearing's in there. Now before the other one cools down, we're going to repeat the same. So again, the writing outside or facing out. Put the bearing on there. Now again, the more perpendicular you are, the better off it's gonna drive. So I'm gonna go like this. It looks pretty straight. And 
Ah, heating this thing might have helped a fair bit. There may be too much give in my towel as well. So what we're going to do here is apply a little bit of heat. It's not giving me what I want. There we go. Yeah, so that bearing is in and it's now flush with the face. So, which is good. So yeah, maybe a, just a tiny bit of heat. Make sure you cool those bearings. So we take this driver apart. You can see what it looks like here. This is made by Motion Pro. Very useful. So cleaning up the, the surface here, pretty essential because you know you wanna make sure that the sealant that we're gonna apply is gonna seal this up. So Q-tips is one option. Alternatively, maybe some paper towel with alcohol on them. I like alcohol because it doesn't smell too bad. It doesn't stink up the shop. Okay, so obviously you wanna make sure these two cases are extremely clean. Um, all the mating surfaces are clean. All the old uh, Yama Bond is gone. Uh, you want your dowels to be in place. Make sure it's spotless. And then these two grooves right here, where these washers go in to uh, hold the seal captive, make sure the grooves are clean, then make sure your washers are clean. Um, and with the bearings in, seals in, we can commence the procedure for the assembly of the gearbox. Um, and then with that, we're gonna let it cure overnight because it's gonna have some silicone-based RTV and we're not gonna put oil in it till it's cured, even though maybe we could, but we won't. So what I'm gonna do is reposition the setup and start the assembly maybe on the vise or something with the shaft uh, going through it, just as it's in the book. Okay, so I've got the shaft mounted on the vise. What I'm gonna do is take this 220 grit and just kind of try to clean off some of the surface corrosion, which is later gonna be a pain for us as we had seen during this assembly. I mean, we're not gonna go really crazy with this, but I'm gonna flip this over. Then we're gonna put this shaft in here so the two um, keyways are up and the other keyways facing out this way. This matches the orientation of the book. We're gonna tighten that in there real tight. Then we're gonna to proceed to getting the, uh, the gearbox assembled onto this. So here we have a pre and a post with the gear. Again, guys, this gear would have lasted a fair bit longer, I'm sure of it. Maybe another five, six years plus. And then it could have been rotated or it could have been rotated right now. So I know that I'm replacing it prematurely, but again, that's the way that I run this channel. So with the shaft mounted this way, and this keyway here, what we're gonna do is start by putting this portion of the uh, gear case onto the end of the shaft, gently. Now, remember the seal is greased, so you wanna do that very gently, no forcing. Then push the gearbox half case here on. And again, there's some corrosion here and, and uh, we did file down this as well. We want to make sure it's really not sharp here. All right. So now we've got the gear case half here and we can send it a little bit past. Then we are going to get the keyway, put it in the middle, and then we are going to get our new wheel. We're going to take our wheel. Now it's symmetrical, so it doesn't matter which way. And we're going to put it down here. and put it on the keyway. Then we take a plastic or rubber mallet. Ouch, that didn't feel great. Now, this gear is kind of floating here, so we don't need to worry about where it is, but we can kind of just about center it. And then we are going to get the 
well, before we get the other half in there, we're gonna start setting this up just like it's shown in the book. So I'm gonna bring this gear case back here. So again, we've got SKF Explorer bearings. The two bearings that go on the worm gear are a 6201 and a 6004. So yeah, I'm gonna aim to have the keyway up top here just to uh, be in a better position to know where I'm putting the shaft on. So keyway directly pointing to the top. So what we're gonna do now is get some grease on the uh, tapered inside of this worm gear so that it doesn't get dry there. Now, the tapered end of this goes towards the back here. So the back here is where that slides onto the auger shaft. So we'll be putting this gear in like this. Now we don't want this to fall out and fall onto the ground. So that's one thing that's for sure. This small bearing goes in there. And then we've got our larger bearing that goes here. Then we've got a washer holding that bearing in. And now we've got this seal. Um, this seal, we can grease the inside after. So the seal is going to go between the two washers on the end here. So this entire assembly now um, we got to be careful that this gear doesn't fall out because it would be not good if it got damaged. So what I'm going to do here is take some tape. So I'm going to tape that for now. So again, we've got the washer, the seal facing the outside. So the letters face the outside, the backside here. And then this next washer, the bearing. Then we've got the worm gear, which is meshed to the wheel. And then we've got the small bearing on the front of the unit essentially. So now with that shaft being tapered, or with the, the inside of the, the gear being tapered, we should be able to slide onto the shaft, which I'll show after. So now the next step would be to bring the second half on and close it in, making sure the dowels are in the right spot. So that'll be next. So now we become ready to put our second half on. So we're gonna stick that at the end of the shaft, slowly get it over the top, considering the seal. Now, before we mate these, we want to put on some Yama Bond. The book calls for three bond 1215. I'm going to be using this Yama Bond 4. Great product. It's RTV silicone base. So here we go with the Yama Bond 4. I've got it on a surface here below on this box of Q-tips. I'm going to I typically use a Q-tip like this. And we're just going to line the mating surface with it, trying to go fairly thin. Then we go here around the dowel hole. So what I'm going to do now is take a Q-tip and make sure that the inner bit is clear here so that we get some squish and we don't get all the way into the case. So I'm going to clean maybe one to two millimeters of the inside edge. So now I'm going to confirm that everything's in order here. Uh, I'm going to bring this close to the to the wheel inside then bring this in remove the tape making sure that the gear doesn't fall and nothing else falls and I think things will fall if they're not held Now this is not something you want to get in a vise and force. You want to 
make sure that it goes together and that it's happy. Then I'm going to get the bolts in there from the other side. So I'm going to do a sequential torque. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to start at 100 inch pounds, which is approximately 11 and a half Newton meters. Then we are going to go to our final torque of 16 Newton meters, which is 142 inch pounds. So we've got 142 inch pounds. Again, same pattern. One, two, three, four, five, six. Don't really like what I'm seeing here. So I'm going to now go to 110 inch pounds. I'm going to go to 120 inch pounds. Hundred and thirty inch pounds. Yeah, I really don't like the feel of this. So I'm going to back these off and I'm going to leave this at 120 inch pounds and no higher. I do not like the feel of this. 115 inch pounds sounds nice. So one. So now we're going to apply grease onto the seal to make sure this goes on nicely. Again, we don't want that to stay dry because the oil won't lubricate the inside of the seal. Now, inside here, the bearing and the gears can kind of shift. So I think what's important is to kind of get them approximate. Then as we're going to install this with the augers on it, we're going to have to maybe turn the auger shaft a little bit to allow it to go on. All right, so we're going to resume our amateur hour here. Um, I've got the gearbox here, as you would see it, looking from the outside of the unit. Um, the first step is to get these pieces on. Again, with the rubber inside that we're not going to touch. So the rubber is going to face the outside. So we're going to have to get the key in the keyway. Make sure that it's in there well. And then slide that on. And engage it into the keyway. I might need to tap that key in a little bit to make sure that it's in there. And there we go. And then we've got the other one. So we want to get the other keyway in here. Can't really see it. There you go. Tap that keyway in and then slide this now that it's onto the keyway. Now the next step is going to be to get the augers on here. So the augers are labeled if you, in case you don't know. So this is the right auger and we know it's the right auger because it has an R on the inside here. So the R goes and faces the gearbox. Now what I'm going to do is just grease up this shaft actually. So I'm going to take that uh, low temperature grease, even though the auger turns with the shaft, I just don't really want any rust building up there in case or you know, and in fact, I should have done this as well. So let me grease this along with the key. We can get the, uh, get this on there. Now we've got the auger mounted as to one. Then I can get the rest of the grease. With the auger shaft all greased up, we can get the other auger. Again, the other auger has an L on it for left. So we can lift this whole thing up and get that on. So with that in place, we can now get the shear bolts in there. So these shear bolts go from inside. Oh, let's get the gearbox back up. There's our bolts. Then we put the nuts and the washers. So this has been part of a, a separate video before. 
Then we've got our final torque value here of 89 inch pounds. Okay, so we've had some of the nuts become fatigued, I think, maybe from being torqued too many times. Uh, I did that maintenance video, now I'm doing this. So the nuts, uh, they didn't stop at 89 inch pounds. And as a reward, I think they're stuck on there now. Let's see. So hopefully the bolts are still good. Uh, the bolts are no longer any good that's awesome the bolts finished the the threads are finished it's really awesome throw that in the garbage now this nut i'm gonna junk it as well because i think the locking mechanism might be bad so luckily i have another shear bolt kit that i did a video about before so i'll start using parts from there to make this situation better so what we're going to do on this one i'm going to go to 70 inch pounds of the 89 and i'll make sure that we stop there okay we're at 70. let's try that 89 again 89. so we'll repeat this on the other side because we failed both sides so this bolt being quite stubborn it's not coming loose it's just stuck on there which is really 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 awesome so it's very annoying as well working within this auger with some light tapping so the nut and the bolt are both garbage so now i'm gonna do the other side to 89 inch pounds i had done one already let's try the others so this is the one i had not done so i'm at 89 inch pounds on the one bolt and 89 inch pounds on the other bolt so two bolts failed here so one subtle observation is that there's not much bolt protruding out here past the uh, the nut. That's the old. Now on the new, Yamaha has probably chosen a bolt that's about a millimeter longer, which might help with the uh, locking mechanism. Who knows? So one of the things I'm going to do is put some grease around the uh, in this crack. There was some kind of quasi electrical tape here before, but I didn't want to try getting that back in there because I would have probably had a bit of swearing. So by sticking grease in this crack, maybe we can maintain some kind of barrier for infiltration. And then I'll do the other side as well. So we're then going to stick these on to the end. Again, this is a 6203 RS bearing, so rubber shield. This is CNU, the same uh, Chinese manufacturer. I'm going to leave these in place because they feel very, very smooth and they're shielded and they weren't exposed to all those filings. So we do that to both sides and then we're ready for the auger insertion. All right, so we're gonna to proceed to putting the auger in the gearbox back onto the auger shaft. I've had a look in the uh, gearbox here and I can see that the keyway is at about the 11 o'clock position looking at it like this. So I'm gonna go and just slightly turn the shaft so the keyway is at about that position. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put the key in the keyway on the shaft. And now this is probably a two person job and I'm gonna try it with uh, just myself anyway. So what I'll do is I've got the bolts here for the uh, bearing housings on the end. I'm gonna try to put this on and hopefully the key aligns with the, the keyway on the uh, gear and we can get this finished up. All right, here we go. So I see that we're probably caught up on the keyway here. All right, so we're on there. It wasn't too bad, but... Uh... All right, so we're gonna get the support member installed. I'm gonna apply some Loctite to the bolts. Again, this is my favorite Loctite, number 248. Finger tight. So I've done that, and I'm gonna to proceed to tightening the end. So we can now proceed to tightening the bearing housing. Eleven Newton meters or ninety seven inch pounds. Same thing on the other side. So we're going to go 
go ahead now and tighten the uh, the center bolt. For that, you can actually grab the auger very securely. And as you tighten the bolt, make sure you're pulling on the auger. We just don't want to send the forces through the gearbox if we don't have to. Same thing on the other one. Grab the auger securely. And that's 20 Newton meters or 177 inch pounds. Now the value on this is 23 Newton meters or 204 inch pounds. All right guys, so one of the things that I think can be useful and it's addition to the Yamaha manual here for this gearbox. Um, so we've sealed it up with Yamaha Bond 4 on all the sealing surfaces. We've got the seals on the two sides. We've got the seals sealed the back. Um, I did some chainsaw work in the past and we can use a vacuum and a pressure gauge in order to apply a slight pressure. Now, to me, there's never a vacuum on this. So we're just going to apply the pressure and check it out. So I've got this midi vac uh, vacuum and pressure gauge. And on the end here, I've got a plastic end and then they give you these kind of silicone rubber uh, things to help with sealing. So I've got the, the level plug in. I'm going to stick this into the drain hole and I'm going to hold it. Okay, so here we go. We're going to try to apply some pressure and we're going to keep that pushed into the gearbox. So I'm going to apply 5 PSI and let that pressure sit there for about 30 seconds. Now, if we're not dropping, it means that we're sealed. Um, so to me, I'm satisfied with this as a start. Now on the chainsaw, usually it's 7 PSI pressure and seven PSI vacuum. So I know that those uh, double lip seals can hold that kind of pressure. So we can actually try a vacuum just to say we did. So we're gonna release that pressure now. Then we switch this device to vacuum mode. And then we pull the air out of it for a five PSI negative. So that's what I've got now is a five PSI negative. So we're good there. So I was thinking about this last night while falling asleep and, you know, well, why don't we try it? We put all that sealing on, sealing uh, Yamaha Bond 4 on. Might as well try to make sure that it's correctly sealed. Okay, so we're going to film the oil in the worm gear case. I'm going to try a different approach here. I've had some uh, feedback on the channel and I'm willing to give it a try. So we'll try to do it like the, uh, so we're we'll trying to take a, an approach of filling it like a, um, Okay, so we're gonna fill the gear case here, the snowblower with some oil. Instead of filling it from the top and let it fill till it gets full, since that hole is fairly small, I'm gonna try filling it from the bottom until it gets to the top, and at that point, I'll uh, stop filling it. Uh, this way, the air is gonna be able to come out, um, and it won't lead to a situation where the oil is puking out. So I've got some sealing compound from my kid's uh, Play-Doh. I've got a syringe. And then as for oil, we're gonna use this uh, I could have bought any old oil, but I'm going to use this Yama Lube uh, Marine Gear Case Lube. So this is SAE 90, ADW 90. And I'll post a couple widgets here as to why that's the better. Um, and then in terms of torque value, we're 142 inch pounds or 16 Newton meters for this drain bolt and this fill bolt. So the snowblower is tilted up at quite an angle. So I'll take the fill bolt out, what Yamaha calls the fill bolt. And then when I fill the oil and it comes out of the fill bolt, because it's off level by quite a bit, that means that when I tilt it back down, it'll spill over, which is fine. So I've got that bolt there. Now I'm going to put the tube in the bottom here and I'm gonna apply the sealing putty even though there's better ways to do this, I'm going to try this one. So I'm going to apply that like that, and I'm going to hold it once I start. This is maybe not a good idea. We're going to find out here. Then I'm going to take this gear case oil. So I'm going to fill the oil to 100 mils. So it's quite a bit thicker, as we would expect, compared to the engine oil. Okay. So stop that there. It's, it's going to start filling the gear case. I'll keep some pressure on this. And I'm gonna push it down with my chin. There we go. Harder to push with your chin than you might think. So we've got 50 milliliters pumped out now. 
Okay, so now that we're we've got 60 milliliters pumped into it, we're starting to see um, the oil flow over top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this bolt here, just snug, and I'm going to do this so that the air can't find its way in. Now when I pull the drain plug quickly, I'm going to stick the drain bolt in there, and hopefully I don't lose much oil, and then I can make sure it's level. Here we go. Okay, so we lost about a drip of oil there, which wasn't too bad. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to remove my uh, sealing putty, which worked. I'm going to dump that oil back into the... So again, 60 milliliters is plenty. Okay, the syringe is clean. Now I'm going to torque up the drain bolt. Again, 16 newton meters or 142 inch pounds. Now what I'm going to do is get the snowblower back on level. So now that the snowblower is level, I'm going to take the top fill bolt out. And then what's going to happen is the oil is going to drain uh, until the point where it's level with that fill bolt, which is what the manual wants. So there's not much coming out there at all. So I've taken a bit of oil in now, and I'll just inject it in there to make sure that we've got a nice level. And again, that final bolt is 16 newton meters or 142 inch pounds.